Hi guys, welcome back to the third part of our modular music beginners tutorial. I'm the Cliff Actor and yeah, nice nice to have you here maybe. I don't know, I don't see you. Um, if you want, uh, today I want to talk about VCO voltage controlled oscillators. We got this little guy here or this one and about waves, about uh, modulation, what is possible with what we have here. If you want to follow this patch, you can download it. The download link is in the description below, but you have to install some extra modules by Audio Dave. I will um, put the link in the description as well. It's about this LFO and this multiples, okay? The patch you see here is there's a lot of stuff that's uh, what we will need here. Um, the only interesting thing to explain is this area here. Um, this is an attenuator that goes to a multiple that feeds this uh, oscillator and this oscillator with the same information, with the same voltage. And it's connected to the volt per octave input, so yeah, we have the the tone, the frequency here, okay? So when I use here the offset, it goes up or down. And you see this oscillator is connected to this scope, the second oscillator is connected to this scope. This is something we maybe we'll need later, not now. But this is only to explain why I do have this stuff here. Okay, let's set this back and dive straight in to the oscillator things, okay. First, these oscillators have um, four different waveforms and every waveform comes in a digital and an analog style, I say, okay. The first one is a sine wave, digital, analog, you hear there are a little bit more overtones maybe, and um, there's a little shift in the frequency between digital and analog. That shouldn't be like this, but it is, okay? But it's not important at the moment. Then we have a triangle. You see the waveform here. And this is the analog emulation. Looks a little bit softer. Go to the saw. And digital, uh, analog, digital again. And uh, let's bring that a little bit down. Uh, square or pulse. And this analog emulation looks very nice. Looks like this, okay? Okay, that's the most basic stuff. Let's go back to this sine wave first. Um, every VCO has an input. It's volt per octave in this case that controls the frequency. So we are connected here, and you see, okay, and here you can connect the sequencer, I have this one prepared here, now you can play melodies, okay. Um, first thing I will show you is back to the square wave. Let's bring this a little bit down. You have one control here, this is the pulse width. This is 50-50. And when you move it here, you see and hear the difference. Okay. Let's bring it back to zero. And this is something you can use to, uh, you can modulate it. Very common is for instance, to use a sine or triangle wave there with a low frequency oscillator this is like the same thing like VCO only that the frequencies go lower okay and here you control the strength of this now this is very common if you make pads or long evolving sounds but that's not the only possibility you can use this so if you go higher and set the strength 
heavier you can get really strange sounds even if you go let's disconnect this um, to a VCO if you do the same thing with the VCO you will see let's try sign first now we are in audio range you see you will still hear the, the basic frequency of this one but also the frequency of this one okay now you can, can connect this guy here with the first row of the sequencer okay um, now when you change the waveform to control that to a square wave maybe not 100% can get really nice sounds and now control this with a second row this is now the frequency of this one okay Okay, nice. This was um, pulse width modulation. Okay, let's disconnect the stuff. Um, this one, this one. I need to get back. And let's go back here to the sine wave. Okay, next modulation we can do. Now we got a sine wave here is this one, this is frequency modulation so we control the frequency of this VCO with another modulator that can be a LFO, another VCO, whatever and very very straightforward this is the input let's give it a little bit more and now the strength See, that's absolutely easy. Okay, you can do the same thing using a, a square wave, then you have only like two frequencies. So, okay, we got the, you got the principle, okay, you got the idea. One thing I I like to do is to make a very soft modulation, like this, with a sine wave, and let's put the, uh, the sequencer in, okay. Now you got this um, singing saw sound. You can get this one even better with a slew limiter. Let's put this in, only to show what I'm talking about. Where is this guy? Slew limiter, come to me. I really don't see him. He's gone. I'm sorry for that. It's too limited. Okay. I won't explain this right now. How this works. It only. Um, I bring this like to fifty percent. Yeah. Now, now you have this gliding. Singing source sound. Okay. And delete this guy. Boom. Okay, 
And now you got the same thing. Um, you have the controls over the strength. And of course, um, you can use um, audio to control this. And again. his belly sounds yeah tons of possibilities and every every um, waveform sounds different of course. Okay, I think you got the idea. Okay, this is um. Oh, what did I dis disconnect? I don't know. I think um, with, with these modulations, you have to play around, check what you what you can do, what you can make. Uh, what's possible, okay? At this point I want to stop this video and I will do a second part uh, that's about um, sync, hard and soft sync, okay? Because I think it will be too long to make it together. So stay tuned, thank you for watching and as soon as possible I will make the second part of the oscillator video, okay? Thank you, this was the Cliff Factor. Keep knobbing. Have fun. See you later.